could it be, welcome back, could it be that we have finally reached the tipping point with wretched wokeness? This outrageous story you're about to hear certainly makes a powerful case that we are. An assistant professor at Old Dominion University in Virginia attempting to normalize, yes, normalize pedophilia, advocating we destigmatize and rebrand these deeply sick members of society. I use the term minor attracted person or MAP uh, in the title and throughout the book for multiple reasons. Um, first of all, because I think it's important to use terminology for groups that members of that group want others to use for them. Um, and MAP advocacy groups like Before You Act um, have advocated for use of the term MAP. Um, they've advocated for it primarily because it's less stigmatizing than other terms like pedophile. Uh, a lot of people, when they hear the term pedophile, they automatically assume that it means a sex offender. Uh, and that isn't true, and it leads to a lot of misconceptions about attractions toward minors. How could a sex offender not be a pedophile? I just don't get that. So most of the patients that we have in the GEMS clinic actually know their gender, usually around the age of puberty, but a good portion of children do know as early as seemingly from the womb, and they will usually express their gender identity as very young children, some as soon as they can talk. They might say phrases such as, I'm a girl, or I'm a boy, or I'm going to be a woman, or I'm going to be a mom. Kids know very, very early. So in the GEMS clinic, we see a variety of young children all the way down to ages two and three, and usually up to the ages of nine. When they come into the clinic, they'll see one of our psychologists and we'll be talking to them about their gender, we'll be talking to their family about how to best support that child and how to make sure that that child has the space and support to explore their gender and uh, do well throughout their development. And we'll be answering any parent questions. A lot of parents do have questions and so we answer those questions. The biggest piece of advice I give parents uh, who are coming through the gender clinic at Boston Children's Hospital is to just be supportive. Um, sometimes you might not understand Understand. Sometimes you feel like you don't know the terms or you don't kind of get exactly what the child means when they say that they might be this gender, but the biggest thing you can do is just love your child and support them and just allow them to express themselves. That's the biggest protector as well against negative mental health effects such as depression, suicidality, anxiety that we worry about for our gender diverse kids and young adults. So that support from a parent is one of the best protective factors and one of the best things they can do. Do either of you have any questions for Miss Pentecost? I like your eyeshadow. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you like her eyeshadow. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Maybe she'll let you borrow it when you're older, like when you're this. allowed to wear makeup. Just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, one of the things I think is great about Miss Pentecost is she reminds us that we we follow a God who calls us to not conform to things of this world. Uh, that we're supposed to be transformed by the renewal of our minds. And that means that what I think today may have to change tomorrow if I continue to renew my mind. And it's so cool that we serve a God that calls us to continue to grow and continue to, to change into something new uh, and to not be bound by the ways that the world confines us sometimes, that, that we're supposed to live differently. Parents upset and a school principal apologizing. It's after their middle school students in seventh grade social studies at Challenger Middle School were asked personal questions in a survey as part of an assignment. Way 31's Matt Kroschel dug into how the controversial survey that was sanctioned ended up in homework. Matt. And Marie, those questions included things like uh, sexual orientation and asking the students how liberal their parents were. There were 48 questions in this survey. And they were not vetted or approved by the school leadership or the district. The principal here at Challenger Middle School saying this survey didn't meet school standards. It's not clear if the teacher who included this in their lesson will face any disciplinary actions by the district because the district said they refused to comment on personnel matters. But the principal did send out an email to parents this week saying the teacher teacher was asked to remove that survey and now they're apologizing to parents for the error. There was a question about very targeted information about parents, about you asking the kids, uh, are your parents liberal? Yes, the very last question was, are your parents liberal or progressive in the political thoughts? And the only question or the answer to that was yes, no, or neutral which I feel is also, once again, very inappropriate to ask a child. And it just asks just for liberal or progressive parents. It is pretty much targeting conservative parents. 
That parent didn't want to use her face on TV or use her name, but again, she's very upset and she says that she's brought those concerns to the principal and she's really not happy with the response here. Just that email going out to all the parents says it made their family feel very uncomfortable. She's worried about her student back here in the classroom in that same room with that same teacher. At least that's the current situation inside.